Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Can you believe it? We've made it through 2021. Just around the corner, 2022. Hopefully that'll fetch something a lot better for us all. Today, we're going to wrap up the pens that I've been using during December of 2021. Now, this month, to be honest, it was themed more around the inks than the pens. So they were all what I would term as loosely Christmas inks. So join me down on the mat. I'll take a look at the pens and give them a ranking. Here we are down on the mat. As usual, I'm going to fetch the pens out in descending order of how I ranked them this month. So position number six, and it breaks my heart to do this, it goes to the Moonman M800. At the start of the month, I had Robert Oster Elf's Cap. You know, that's my nice Christmassy named ink. It performed really badly. Partway through the month, I then swapped it to Pilot Urashizuku Shinryoku. Again, it didn't perform very well. So I ended up swapping the nib to be a broad nib. Let's take a look at some of our writing. Now this first one, this is actually when it had the original Moonman nib in with Urashizuku Shinryoku. Now why I can't show you it with Elf's Cap is after I recorded my intro video, it just would not write no matter what I did. I pulled the nib, I cleaned the nib and the feed, put it back in, still wouldn't write. I'd get maybe half a sentence to a sentence and it would just stop writing. So I thought to myself, it's something to do with the ink. And I went for one of my stable inks, which is this pilot. And I thought, let's try that. So I cleaned it all out, filled it with that pilot ink. And yes, it did write a little bit better. I might be able to get sometimes up to half a page before it would stop writing. So this first page, this is when it had that original Moon Man nib, which was a fine. I tried all sorts to get it to work. No matter what I did, it just didn't seem to want to write more than half a page now. So what I then did is I changed the nib. As part of the ink vent surprises from my wife, she gave me some broad Goulet nibs. So I changed it over and I popped that broad nib in. It now will write. It writes really nicely. As you can see from this image, it's a nice broad line. I've had no more issues with the flow, apart from the fact that when it's been laid for more than an hour, I need to just do a little bit of scribbling to get it to write again. But once that ink's flowing, it's flowing really well. So I think I need to spend a bit more time working on this nib. I got it to the point where it would work. That's why I haven't done any more during the month, but it's something I'll play around with in the future. So let's take a quick look at the pen. I love the looks of the M800s. I love this green one. Look at that. Gorgeous colouring as I turn it around. As I say, now the nib on here, it's a Goulet nib, which I believe is a Hero, and it's a broad nib. I'm really getting into broad nibs, so I was planning on changing that nib out sometime in the new year anyway, but this really gave me the kick to do that. I hope I can get it fixed so it works more consistently. But because of these writing issues, I really, truly cannot give it anything more than six. So at position number six, we've got the Moon Man, M800. Position 5 for this month goes to the Jinhao 159. Another nice looking pen. It's a nice hefty pen. You can really feel it in your hands. But it's another one where I was getting some issues with the way it was writing. So at the start of the month, I had Pen BBS Christmas Red. Again, I was getting a problem where it would write about half a page then stop writing. And to get it to write again, I would have to prime the feed. Now, this ink has got some shimmer in it, so I was putting it down to that. I then changed the ink out, and I thought, look, I'm going to stick with Christmas colours. I'm going to stick with Pen BBS. So I put Pen BBS Christmas Green in there. And to be honest, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. I was still getting the problems. Let's take a look at my writing samples. Now, all my writing samples today, they are on 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. So this first one, this is with the Christmas Red. You can see I can't spell, but we're not here to test my spelling. It looks really nice. It's not a bright red. So that's, to me, one of the things which was a little bit of a surprise. But it looks okay. And when it writes, it really writes well. It's just not consistent. You know, I'm actually managed here to get the whole page out of it. But then it stopped after that. You can see on the 
I'm going to say the fourth line where it says paper button TR. You can see on there where the T is, how, yes, it's got the crossbar, but then we've got railroading and it goes to nothing. And same with the R next to it. So it's just not consistent. We'll take a look at the greening. To be honest, I didn't like the greening in this pen. You can see on the paper here, the inconsistency. So it started off and it was going lighter and lighter as I was going down the page. I got down to the sentence that starts when the pen, well, it just stopped writing again. I had to prime the feed. Once I primed the feed, wrote OK. I mean, like all my pens, I do use this on multiple different papers. So, you know, I've got the Tomai River here. I've got my optic paper, which is what you can see where I've got the lit pens listed. I use some cheap paper. I use Rhodia paper. I use Clairefontaine paper. I try to test out the pens on a lot of different papers, no matter what paper I used it still was inconsistent. Looking at the pen itself, you know, again, it looks quite nice. It's a nice hefty pen. If I take the cap off, you know, it fits so well in my hand and it's nice and broad there at the bottom. I've still got that Jinhao nib in there. I'm going to spend again more time working on this. I think this might be one where I may experiment to see if I can get a different kind of grind on that nib. But the first thing I have to do is find an ink that works well in it. I've got a few in mind, but that's for a future video. And I am thinking of doing a video where I'm trying to get these pens working. If that's something that you'd be interested in, please drop a comment down below just so that I know that you'd be interested in seeing what I'm doing to try and get these pens to work. But because of all these, I'm going to call them issues, they were half. This comes in at position number five. Position number four. This goes to the Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling, which has got Robert Oster's Santa Hangover. Now, this is meant to be a medium nib. To me, it looks more of a fine nib. I can live with that. The ink colour, I've got to be honest, I'm not sure about it. I'm not trying to say it doesn't look nice. It does. It's a nice colour. But in my mind's eye, it's not what I see when I hear the phrase Santa's Hangover. So that's a little bit of an off-putting one to me. Let's take a look at the Tomai River paper. So on here, you can see, yeah, it looks quite nice. The ink performs really well. I've had no issues with the flow all the way through the month. Worked really well now the pen it does smell not too much at the moment but i've had this pen now over a year so it's had time to like dissipate that smell but it's definitely there you can tell you're using it through your nose it's nice to write with it's smooth there's no catching again i've tried it on all these different papers i don't like the fact that it seems to be on that fine side of medium that's personal choice i prefer broad nibs so i would like to have seen the line a little bit tending more towards that medium rather than towards the fine the ink as i said it's okay it's not exactly what i would think of but that's fine i'm glad i've used it this is part of the reason for doing these videos so i can experiment and try different things if we take a look at the pen you know it's a plain color and you know, it's red matches well with the season Let's take off that. You know, it's a really plain nib on it. Fits really nicely in my hand. You know, it's nice, it's comfortable to use. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow. So it's enjoyable when I'm writing. Bit on the light side, I would have liked a little bit more weight in it. But again, we're talking personal preferences here. But overall, actually quite enjoyable. It's just unfortunate that I had to put it somewhere. And when I look at my top three, this is definitely position number four. There we go, number four. I'm just going to reposition the paper, then we can get all of them on. There we go, because the last three is from the bottom three entries. Let me get that paper lined up properly. So I've got three pens left, an Opus 88, a Bennu, and a Twisby. At position number three, I'm going to give that to the Twisby Draco. Since I've had this pen, I've never had it without ink in it. It's nice. I like the colours of it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels in the hand. I like the way it writes. Although on my Tomai River, I'm saying there's a lot of character and shading. I write that paper about halfway through the month. The more I've been using this and the more I've been inspecting my writing, I've got to be honest, it seems fairly flat. There's not as much character in there as what I was hoping for. Let's go and take a look at the Tomai River paper. As I said on the top line, wow, it's a lovely combination. It really does. The ink and the pen really match each other. I'll show you that when we come back to the actual pen. It's nice to write with. It's smooth. It's a broad nib. I love writing with it. I love the line that it's given me. It glides over the paper. 
personal choice again and maybe want to try and introduce a little bit more feedback but i'm not sure on that at the moment it's one of those where it's really borderline i've found this month when one of the other pens hasn't been around this is the one i reach for so it is enjoyable i do like using it the downside which is why it comes in at number three i do find it's just that slightly little bit short for me so let's take a look at the pen i love the coloring on this just look at that Again, as I said, if I put it next to the mulled wine, we've got such a nice combination there of pen and ink. I think it looks really nice. Just take off the cap. Sorry about that. The phone decided to ring. It was yet another spam artist. So I taught them some new words and hung up on them. Right, I'm back where I was. So I've taken the cap off. We've got this gorgeous rose gold colored nib. It's a steel nib. I think it's a number five nib. Again, one of the things that lets this pen down. I'd like to have seen a larger nib. The way it fits in my hand, I say for me, and this has been very, very picky, it just feels that little bit too short. I think another half a centimetre, five millimetres, it would have been quite nice. But it is what it is. It's still enjoyable. I still like writing with it. And at the end of the day, as I'm always saying, what matters is the pen lets you get ideas out of your head and onto paper. This pen does that and it does it really well. That means it also comes in at position number three coming in at position number two again i had to think long and hard about this position number two it goes to the opus 88 coloro in this gorgeous blue and teal color i quite like this i like the way it looks i've got in here diamine jack frost not 100 percent set on the ink i know it's blue with red sheen but i wasn't seeing as much red sheen as i was hoping for so that's what's really put me off a little bit but saying that it's still nice. This is an eyedropper filled pen. As such, it's still going strong even at the end of the month. Most of the other pens have already run out of ink and I've cleaned them out. This one, still going strong and I reckon I've only used maybe half of it. So plenty of time to write that out. Let's take a look at the Tomai River paper. So as we can see on here, initially I did have some issues with this pen when I was writing on Rhodia paper. But I think that was one of two things. I think it was partly because the way I had the pad, so it was very soft and spongy underneath. But also I think think the nib was very smooth so this is one of those rare occasions i got up my micro mesh and i actually roughened up the nib a little bit after that it's wrote really well so not sure if it was down as i say to the thickness of the pad and being bouncy or the nib it's still smooth to write with even though i've roughened it it's still enjoyable to write with it feels comfy when i'm holding it i'll show you that in a minute i've said here the ink it's got a nice color but i just don't see that sheen and that's what i'm looking for so i'm looking for that gorgeous red sheen you can see tiny bits coming out on this photo i know it's very hard to say when you see a photo as a combo i don't think i'll actually put this ink in here again i've got a couple of other broad nibs i've actually now got a 1.1 stub nib that i may try in see if i get anything better out of this we'll take a look at the pen so the pen i say it's it's utilitarian it's not overly attractive i do like the way we've got the alternate materials which really fetch it to life if i take the cap off you know, like most of the pens, it's got a nice nib, steel nib. I believe all my pens this month, let me just double check. Yep, all the pens were steel nibbed. There it is in the hand. Again, like that Draco, it looks a bit short. But because it's not as wide as the Draco, it doesn't feel it. I know it's a bit weird where I'm saying one's too short and the other's not, but I think it's how it feels in the hand. It's comfortable to write with though and with this i've written for sessions where i've wrote eight or nine pages back to back and had no issues with it but even so we need to rate it so the opus 88 Claro comes in at position number two so by a process of elimination there's only one pen left which means it's got to be position number one and that goes to the bennu talisman in the dragon's blood pattern this pen i'm going to show you around it straight off look at that gorgeous coloring we've got red and green and it's sparkling to me if nothing else this pen shouts christmas you know these are the reds and the greens that always come to mind when you're talking about christmas uh, it's, it's absolutely it's gorgeous to look at and I'm not normally a sparkly pen person, but this one, oh, it really catches the light lovely. Now, I started the month with Diamine Elf. I ended the month with Diamine Garland. The Elf, 
that was from the 2019 ink vent. The garland is from the 2021 ink vent. So we've got, we've got both ink vent calendars represented here. We take a look at the Tomai River paper. You know, this ink is nice in here. It looks really nice. The pen as a whole is really nice to write with. It's very smooth. Had no issues with it. It's absolutely gorgeous. At the bottom of the section, there's a little, I always call it a lip. That does dig into my finger when I'm writing. I write with my fingers at the bottom of that and it always digs in on this pen. But that doesn't matter. Now, unfortunately, when we get to the bottom of this page, you'll see it trails off. That's because I ran out of ink. I've had three fills of ink in this this month. One of Elf and two of Garland. I absolutely love the way it feels in my hand. It's a pen that I could quite happily say I'm going to just use one pen for the whole month. And it would be this one. If we take a look at the Garland. Wow. I absolutely love this ink in this pen. You can see here, you know, you've got the green of the base colour. But look at all that sheen that you can actually see. This is such a nice combo. It's a combo that if I can buy a full bottle of the Garland, I think it will be the only ink that ever goes into this pen. I like it so much. Now, I do have some other teals, so I may try them in there as well. But wow, I just love this combo. It writes really well. It looks nice. It's comfortable. To me, this is my perfect pen to use. Well, as I say, literally, I could use it for a full month and still be happy with it. And I don't often say that about pens. Let's take another look at it. So I'll show you around it again though well one more time let's take the cap off it's got this gorgeous nib i believe that's a number six schmidt nib it fits so nice in my hand it's light i would like a little bit more weight in it but you can't have everything but it's not uncomfortable it's a cartridge converter but by the look of it there's no metal so i may be able to eyedropper it at this as you can see it's now empty and I've got a bit of that green. I need to give that converter another clean out. Pop that back together. For Christmas, honestly, between that pen and that garland ink, I don't think it can be beat. I really don't. But all this means, this comes in at position number one. Just going to turn the page. So during the month, I also had another two pens that I added in. So as one of my other pens would run out, I could have another pen. So what I first did is I used the Hong Dian 525. 23 Australian dollars, so not an overly expensive pen. With the issues I was having with the Moon Man, I thought, well, I'm going to try this ink in another pen. And that's why I went for this, the 525. Let's take a look at the writing. So on here, you can see there's no issues with the ink. The ink is perfect. It flows really well. This is a fine nib on here, so we're not talking like writing in broad or changing the nib size. They're both fine. I love the green colour, but it's another one. Not sure if I'd want a full bottle of it. At the moment, I've just got a sample. It's nice, but so am I the greens the pen itself is a little bit on the thin side i'll show you that when we come back but it's not uncomfortably so it's short but it posts all right my problem is i keep forgetting to post it it's been a really nice combo again let's take another look so here's the pen as you can see there's my ugly finger it's very thin let's take the cap off even the section itself is thin and it's got that small number five ish nib there we go that's me holding it I post it. I say post it. It's not too bad. Doesn't back weight it. My problem is I just forget to do that. So this is the Hong Dian 525. Yeah, it was nice to have as a backup pen. My other backup pen, as you can see from the list, is a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. This has got a medium gold nib. In here, I had Diamine Mistletoe. So another Christmassy ink. Again, it's another ink I believe was from the 2019 ink event calendar. Let's take a look at the writing. I love this green color. I've got a full bottle of this. The green, it's different. It's not a in your face green. Reminds me a little bit of Colt Pen's Deep Dark Green, which again is made by Diamine. I think it's different. It's unusual enough that people aren't going to think that you're just using a green pen. They're going to, well, to my point of view, want to question it because it does look different. It's a gold nib. It's hard to compare against the other nibs that I've been using this month because they've all been steel. At the end of the day, all the nibs, apart from that Moonman M800, let me get ideas out of my head and down onto paper. So in that respect, yeah, they all work perfectly well. And this, at the moment, is, I actually just finished this yesterday, so it got cleaned out. I like this. It's a piston filler. That does make a difference because 
it makes it easier to fill, but it makes it harder to clean. I like the fact we've got the transparency, so I can actually see the level of the ink. In my hand, take that cap off. This one, it's another sharp pen, but posted is quite nice. It does feel slightly back heavy to me when I'm posting it. And again, my biggest issue, I forget to post it. And then I wonder after I've written a page or so, why it feels a bit weird. But that is a Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Just gonna clear this off and we'll fetch back the pens for one final look. So here we have it, the pens from December of 2021. Position six, the Moonman M800. Number five, Jinhao 159. Number four, Fountain Pen Revolution Darjeeling. Number three, Twisby Draco. Number two, Opus 88 Coloro. The winning pen for the month, the Bennu Talisman in Dragon's Blood. My two backup pens, the Hongdian 525 and the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think of my choice of pens? What do you think of my ranking? What pens were you using? How would you rank them? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time someone likes, every time someone comments, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.